What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tale of the Tape. You can catch us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. Damn. Uh, this is episode, what, 20, I think? 19? No, I think it's episode 19, yeah. yeah we're getting close, though. So still pumping oh, yeah. them out. Getting close to that, that 2020 vision. You know what I mean? All these people will be talking about that beginning of the year, man, that 2020 vision. They didn't think that vision would look like this, though. Yeah, totally ass backwards, man. <laughs> terrible. Man, isn't this crazy? Fuck. Uh, but guess what, dude? We were just talking about, like, Lake Tahoe. Places like that, man, they're still popping right now. No oh, one's yeah. scared. No, the mountain's busy as fuck, dude. For real, though. That's, that's the real thing. The mountains are fucking busy as fuck. Outdoors, everything. It's crazy. Yeah, everybody feels like it's safer up there, which is, I guess, is kind of true. It's it's true to a certain extent, but I'd still say avoid uh, any crowded places as much as possible. But that's that's the thing, man. People people think the mountains are not crowded, and then next thing you know, you got a hundred people in the same spot. Uh, All right. Fuck, man. Like up where I'm at, there's a li- uh, it's like a uh it's a lake it's a pretty legit lake you can bring motorboats and all that in there can't bring jet skis but you can go out fish and do all that all the fun stuff and uh ever since fucking uh quarantine happened and then lockdowns happened dude my my lake out here is so fucking packed like you never see anyone out here on the road it's i mean people consider this sticks and then uh, now it's like every time i walk my dog i see like 10 cars pass by with that kayaks and shit like that of course. Shit's annoying. Everybody has, I feel you. Everybody's invading your space, man. Oh, I know. I know, man. How's Vegas doing right now? Uh, Shutting down. Well, not really shutting down. They're just extending everything, so nothing's changing. They're not opening anything up, but they're also not closing anything down either. Yeah, I saw that. A few casinos are still staying open and shit. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Fucking, yeah, uh, Palms is still closed. Rio's still closed. Uh, fuck. Trying to think what else. Mandalay Bay is closed, I think, still. But they're finally oh, starting man. to open up a couple more. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think I think sh- the way shit is, uh, I wouldn't doubt if, like, September, beginning of fall, we're, we're going to experience, you know, a little looser, a little looser laws with this shit. I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic with all that shit. So who knows what's really going to happen. But I'd love to come out to Vegas and visit. And just fucking, I mean, aside from train, chill with you, kick it, you know what I mean? But fuck, man, I'll be honest. I miss the Vegas golf courses, man. I love to play golf out there in Vegas. It's such oh, a yeah, cool dude. little spot. Yeah, they there's so cool fucking courses. Bad. You ever play golf out there? No, dude, I've never golfed. What? Nah. Oh, man, you have to, bro. That's the secret to business. I Everyone want to. It'd there. be fun to learn, but I've never played. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... It's frustrating at first. Everyone just wants to go out on the driving range and pound some shit. But uh, that's where business happens, bro. Real estate, all that, all that good yeah. stuff. Fucking uh, man. So what? What's what's good with the fight game right now? I, I see a lot on the news, man. I see a lot of people talking. First off, I gotta address uh, uh, Kamzat. Is that how you say his first name? Yeah. Kamzat? It's not Kazmat. Yeah. Kam- Kamzat. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool and all, man. I, I like his fucking his bravado and his uh, last two performances. I mean, fighting back to back like that was is insane. What within ten days of each other, I think. But that was that's the right framework about it. But I saw a couple of his older fights, and I mean, he he's not just a grappler, bro. I, I mean, he definitely has some good uh, some good exchanges on the inside. He's definitely a powerful dude, and uh, I mean, everyone thinks he's cocky as fuck, but man, he's calling it everybody out it's crazy what do you think of him bro what do you think of the recent shit i mean after hit his second fight you know in that 10-day period and then going going crazy on twitter and instagram the way he's been doing he's just trying to get his name out there man anything he can do to put his name out there and to continue to or to impress dana white he's trying to do which is good for him and it's good for the ufc too but do you think he's all talk half the people he's calling out can't even fucking fight Conor McGregor's yeah. retired. Nate Diaz don't want to fight. 
Uh, yes. Damian Maya's pretty much fucking retired. Um, yeah, Damian Maya's old. You know, we know he's over over his prime, pat, way past his prime. So, I mean, I like the ambition, and I like the fact that he's trying to get his name out there, but all the people that he's calling out, they're not going to find him. I think we talked about who, who would be the next logical fight for him, you know, in regards to legitimacy, because I know a lot of people uh, on on social media, a lot of the fans are saying, you know, he's it's like 50 50 you know half of them are saying yeah he's he's legit he's fucking he's gonna smash smash everybody but then uh i see a lot of fans saying uh he's he's only he's beat two unranked dudes he's you know he hasn't even uh began to to go against elite guys and he's he's gonna ultimately his hype train is gonna be over with I, I i'm neutral on that because obviously i'm not that deep of an mma fan to really to really justify any of those claims, I, I just like the fact that he's he's putting his name out there the way he is, and then he's I mean he's even getting his name in there with uh, Conor McGregor, and I saw that what was it that tweet that Conor said uh, about uh, agreeing to something or, or I mean it was a short ass tweet, just pretty much says he's uh, he agrees to, to something, and uh, uh, it we don't even know who the fuck he's talking about. He's keeping that shit such a mystery. It's crazy. Yeah, he accepted a fight, but we don't know who it's against. Yeah, what uh, the fuck? Dana White thought it was Hazmat. Or, yeah, Hazmat. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess Ariel Hawani hit him up, hit up Connor, and he said it wasn't him. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. That's why I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this fucking publicity bullshit where it's just like, let me just be in the fucking, in the, in the activity section of fucking every social media platform because then it's like, of course, his stock gets up, and then on top of that, we're we're fucking anxious to fucking know who he wants to fight. Here's the real question: Is it going to be someone in the boxing ring, or is it going to be someone in the in the MMA uh, cage? That's well, that's he, my take. He, he's officially retired from the UFC, so even though he's still ranked, Dana White mm-hmm. considers him retired. So he's more likely to get a boxing match quicker than it would be a UFC how, fight. How is he even still in the rankings? Because they haven't taken him out yet. I don't know. I want to use his name as uh, as the attention grabber every time you see them, them rankings. <laughs> they want to keep him in the USADA pool, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, Yeah, man, I have a feeling it, it, it might be in the boxing ring, man, because a guy like him, you can't you can't just take a step backwards like that. I mean, I know he, he, he came back in the cage uh, and, and did his thing in, in his last fight. Obviously, he... he Went against a over the past his prime uh, Cerrone. I mean, he he just you know uh, in in best words he he dominated him quickly, quickly and abruptly. But um, I don't think he's gonna want to continue to maybe even go in the cage and and I just don't see Connor that stylistically like not not in not only in the cage but stylistically as, as a as a fighter and as a business outside of the uh you know arena he's uh he doesn't want to do what these i mean okay in best best perspective not to beat around the bush these guys are making fractions fractions of a fraction of a decimal of what he made uh in the boxing ring and in his eyes, you know, I know he took that Cerrone fight, but that was definitely something for him. That was more of like him proving to himself that he can prove to the masses that he's still a great MMA fighter and a great fighter overall. He's not, you know, he's not just some hype train that was, you know, in his prime beating guys and then finally got out of the MMA game uh, in time. No, but I, I think in regards to where he thinks he is financially and also in, in the fame realm of things, boxing is the only uh, logical option because you know he can get the fights. I mean, if, if you fought Floyd Mayweather, dude, you you can you can get other fights in the boxing ring. Will they be riskier and fucking for less money? Absolutely. But will they be for a lot more money and clout uh, than he would be in the octagon? I think so. I mean, dude, look at these YouTube uh, fucking fighters, man. Look at Jake Paul. Look at fucking you know his brother. Um, you know, the guys that they brought on to, to the fucking DAZN network, uh, if they can do that and fight for what they're fighting for, I mean, dude, they're fighting for, like, you know, 
a few mil, dude. They're making that Jake Paul and Logan Paul in just one of their fights on fucking uh, the zone. They're making more than UFC world champions in their whole career in that one fight. You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt. So UFC they, don't pay shit. Yeah, no, UFC doesn't pay shit, and you know MMA should be at that at that point. I mean, I believe that MMA's fan base is, is carries just as much weight as boxing's fan base. Um, I mean, I have yet to see any guy in Bellator or those other organizations that allow more free agency and you know, I guess you can say personalization when it comes to the fighter's image, like with sponsorships and business and all that. Uh, they have, they give more freedom, obviously, like a normal athlete, but I have yet to see one of them make the type of money boxing, you know, elite boxers make, but, uh, Connor's definitely, uh, smart enough to finagle a business deal with his managers and him. And I mean, the, the thing is, is who, and I, and I, I'm bringing this up because you sent me something about him and Pac-Man mm-hmm. and Pacquiao. And that I even said to you first thing I said, I was like, man, that's actually something I've want to watch that's that's def that definitely is an exciting prospect because pacquiao is still old i mean he's i think he's 42 i believe uh so he's getting there in age 42 or 43 he's been active so i mean you know that's taking a toll on his body but he's an active world champion so that's that's the crazy part of, of that whole uh scenario with what i just said at first and you would think okay maybe connor might have a chance but I think that Pacquiao at this age is better than Floyd Mayweather was uh, when he fought McGregor. So that to me is risky, but also he might have the potential to make fifty another fifty million dollars for that kind of fight, man. What do you think? I think that's the best route that he can take. I don't think going to the UFC is a good. If he, I mean, if he truly wants to go back, sure. But if it's just for the money, just for you know the hype or whatever. I'd like to see him in the boxing ring against Pacquiao, too. I don't see why that would be. Well, do you I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it would be a good-ass fight. Do you think that it would boost his career if he fought in the UFC again? Or do you think that would benefit him whatsoever? I mean, what do you think? I don't think him fighting again would help his career at all, regardless of where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Even, even let's say, he stepped in there with Pac-Man. I mean, stepped in there with Pac-Man... Of course, people are going to give him the odds of, you know, he, it might be much closer odds uh, or it might not be. I mean, I, I think it would uh, compared to when he fought Floyd, but uh, people would obviously still put him on the losing side against Pacquiao. But my best my best take on it uh, is that's his only option, because if he gets in there with like a younger guy, even a guy that doesn't have like more than 20 fights on his professional record as a boxer, but still has a name. And someone that's in and around his weight class, um, it'd be way too risky for Connor to do that. I, I would rather him go in the octagon and face someone in the, you know, some one of the younger guys in the, uh, you know, in the top ten in, in let's say lightweight or, or I wouldn't say welterweight. I don't think Connor would hang with a lot of the welterweights right now, just just on sheer size alone. These guys, I mean, it's different, man. Like if, if you're in the boxing ring and you're facing a guy who's let's say naturally a weight class or maybe two weight classes above you there's you know the it, the only difference is, is like you can take more power than you know take more power shots than you supposedly but in mma it's like the fact that it's not just striking you you're solely uh not basing it on that dude guys like uh kamzat would fucking you know if, if he was two weight class above you, you know how easy it would be for him just take you and slam you and dump dunk you on top of your fucking head you know what I mean? So yeah, like that's exactly that's exactly what he just did this past weekend. So yeah, exactly, exactly. He's he's an overpowering kind of guy. So that or whole two weeks prospect, ago, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. But that whole prospect was, is exciting. Thing about how you know him and and uh, Kamzat would would meet in the ring, but or sorry, meet in the octagon. But uh, I don't think it would be. I don't think Connor would really. Stand, I think he would get manhandled. I think. I mean, I mean, uh, Kamzat's kind of a big dude, so tall and you know, frame-wise, he's he's like a middleweight. You know what I mean? The fact that he made 170 was was pretty uh, pretty cool. But that's why when that whole prospect came up, I was like, what the fuck? Like, there's no way these two would meet up. 
And Con- Connor, man, he, he's, he's put on some muscle. I mean, I, I got to give him credit. And some guys know how to do that. You know, like mm. a lot of guys, uh, even in boxing, like Canelo Alvarez, he, he put on muscle onto his frame. And he's the same height as Connor. He's 5'9". Um, you know, he's naturally uh, would be better at 147 or 154 from, like, his stats, if you saw. But that man put on a good amount of muscle uh, and is able to carry that to all the way up to light heavyweight. So, um We'll see if Connor really does, but man, I, I think Connor just loves to be in the spotlight, bro. Like, like how how we're talking about him now, man. Fucking every other fucking podcast is gonna talk about Connor. He mm. can never keep him out of the fucking media. Period. But look at what he Khabib did to him. Yeah. And like yeah. Cosma or Cosma, however the fuck you pronounce his name. Calm he's down. twice the size. <laughs> he's twice the size of fucking Khabib. So oh, yeah. if Khabib finished him in two rounds or whatever it was, however fucking many, yeah, Hamza oh, yeah, would do yeah. it in half the time. And he's fresh, and he's young, and he's you know hungry, and he's on on a momentum, uh, he's on a momentum kick, man. I mean, he's like like I think I saw a quote uh, that he said on uh, or something that he's he he said to uh, I think it was Ariel Hawani or or somebody that interviewed him. He's saying. Uh, talking about his country was it chechnya and uh saying like you know he grew up around like war like he's seen violence you know he's been through a lot of crazy shit which is true man i mean those countries out there i've gone through so much turmoil and and uh, civil fucking uh vi- i mean sorry civilian violence um uh, that those people you know if, if someone like him gets into a, a ring or an octagon uh dude that's that's a walk in the park for him that's why he's saying, man, he's like, this is so easy. He's like, I, I, get, I can get paid to smash people. And, like, his his term smash, I mean, that's really, uh, that's not even an exaggerated term. Like, he's really trying to go in there and smash you. Like, he's yep. just, he exactly. wants to get his hands on you. And he wants to fucking, he wants to slam you. Whether he, he you know, slams you on your, your, your head, your back, whatever. And then, I mean, if you really think about it logically, if you're if his wrestling is that good that you can carry on to you know these elite guys and he can just get his hands on them and just slam you dude you, it doesn't matter how good of an MMA fighter you are and how complete of an MMA fighter you are if you got a guy blitzing you and and just trying to manhandle you and ragdoll you uh, man it's a different aspect and it's tiring you know guy guys you know guys know how how tiring it is just to you know roll around on the jiu-jitsu mat imagine trying to get uh, trying to defend all those punches that he does, and and, and that's his style throughout, you know, his career. So it'll be interesting to see what's his record right now. That's my question. Pretty sure he's like seventeen and 0, 18 and 0, Oh sure. shit! Yeah, no, he's he's definitely. Uh, he, sorry, the phone kind of disconnected. Uh, all right fuck it feels good using a mic now i don't gotta fucking scream i can hear myself so clearly on this thing my bad you there My bad. No, it's all good. I think that the connection's kind of, kind of spotty. Yeah, I'm, I have to use my phone. Uh, oh yeah, connection yeah, yeah. too, so I can look up the, the internet. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why. But anyway, uh, fuck, dude. Uh, tomorrow's card is actually going to be re- really fucking stacked. If you aren't a casual fan, uh, Yo, it's but, not very big names, but the people that are on, fighting uh, that are actually really fucking good. Is this uh, back at the Apex, or is this still on Flat Island? Yeah, it's back at Apex, so they're fighting right down the street from my house. Oh, cool. shit. Nice. So who is it? Who Who is the main card, main, I should say? Uh, main event is going to be fucking Ronda Rousey's golden boy, Edmund oh, Shabazzian. Yeah. He's 11-0 in yeah. fucking middleweight. It's a middleweight main event, so that's Izzy's yeah, yeah. division, bro. Oh, yeah. Against 20-7 oh, uh, and seven Derek Brunson. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shabazian's ranked number nine. Uh, Brunson's ranked number eight. So if he gets past him, man, he's ready. Brunson's kind of like the not really the gatekeeper, but if you get past him, you're pretty much ready for the top five. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've heard of his name. I've seen his highlights. I mean, he's he's definitely considered a a legit contender. So yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. He he gets through this guy, and he's definitely going to be uh, carrying a little more momentum in that division because I mean it's such a it's such a packed division. That uh that middleweight class is uh, in the UFC, man. You got it, it's it's a cross it's a cross section, man. You get you get a lot of guys trying to move up from from welterweight, and then you got a lot of guys at 205 that that realize that they can cut that much weight and, and make it. So I mean, you get a lot of a lot of competitiveness, but at, at the same time, if Izzy's the, I mean, a guy like Izzy being the champion, it just shows you the the level of of uh, competition that weight class has. And uh, I saw uh, this this guy. Um, how do you, how do you say his name again? Edmund Shabazi. Yeah, uh, or, yeah. Is, yeah, Ronda Rousey's uh, fighter, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, man. she manages him and trains with him. Yeah, yeah, I saw that when I think he was 15 years old, and she was, uh, or he was, her uh, her training partner and sparring partner essentially. That's nuts. Yep, and he was at the gym first, so she came after him. So he was wow. already training before he met her. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Mm. Imagine. Oh, man. Yeah, she was able to get him on the Contender Series, and he won that fight in 40 seconds. Then they had him fight on the Ultimate Fighter season finale. He won that fight by split decision. Then he fought this dude, Charles Bird, on the Jones versus Anthony Smith card. He won that fight in 38 seconds. Getting spied, fucking blocking the takedown. Or defending a takedown and starting elbow in this dude's head, and he fucking knocked him out with elbows. Dude, how crazy. Then he choked out Jack Marshman in fucking a minute and 12 seconds. And then he fucking knocked out Brad Tavares with a left head kick. Bro, it was fucking beautiful. He fucking fainted the right jab and just oh. threw up the left head kick. He was out. Nice. Two minutes and 27 Pretty seconds. Sure. So all of his UFC fights have been out of the first round. Wow. That's incredible. Except and for that one split decision. But he's 11-0. and 0. That's insane, mm-hmm. man. Ten finishes out of... 11 wins undefeated. That's impressive in MMA. How incredible is Bro. it that you have Ronda Rousey advising you and guiding you? Yeah, it's fucking insane. It's really good for him, bro. He's got fucking bombs for hands and missiles for fucking legs, dude. Yeah. One, yeah. Oh, one yeah. punch out. One kick out. Yeah. He's got a great build for that weight class, for sure. Yeah, oh, he's, he's perfect for it, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how old is he right now, by the way? If you didn't mention 22. that step. And he's like six two, I believe. Six two, and his uh, reach is like seventy four, I believe. Dude, he's check. the fucking. Yep, seventy four inch reach, and six two. Yeah, this this man's the future. Because I seeing his highlights, and then you emphasizing all of his finishes, and and who who's on that resume of his, um, it, it it just solidifies to me that this man, you know, give him, give him five more fights. And he, he, he'll be, and if Izzy's still going to hold on to that belt, only way Izzy's going to lose that belt is if he decides to move up to 205. But yeah, if Izzy's, yeah. No way happen. nobody's beating his ass. No, no one. So I think if you give this kid five fights, which, I mean, dude, you're, you're guided by Ronda Rousey. Dude. Ronda fucking Rousey guided you in the beginning of your career. I mean, that's insane, uh, the pool that she has. I mean, come on, dude. She she was UFC's golden child, um, and I mean she's made she's made so much money from the UFC. And the UFC's made so much money for, from her. Like she's there's no way in hell that she can't just just demand shit for her fighter. And I and I think uh, the fact of the matter is that her fighter being at this level, uh, the sky's the limit because uh, if he challenges for a title. Uh, can you imagine uh, the type of praise she would get for bringing this fighter up? It'd be insane. Be fucking She's insane. a USC Hall of Famer. She was the first women's what was it Bantam? Bantam I'm pretty sure she was. A, yep, she was first women's bantamweight champion. Yeah. She can get whatever the fuck she wants in that company, dude. Absolutely. Even though she doesn't fight for them anymore, no, she can get. Like, dude, she brought Dana off real quick. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh fuck. Yeah, for real, man. Now my question is, what the fuck did this kid do to get fucking Rousey on his on his team, man? Because I mean, fucking Ronda Rousey backing up a male fighter the way she's doing with this guy, uh, man, that's that's an interesting topic. <laughs> she kicked his ass for long enough. 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. She 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 did put him through the uh, through the grinder. I saw some of those uh, clips where she was uh, doing all of her judo uh, routines and and practicing slamming that kid in every which way uh, she could. Man, and it's insane. It's insane the size that Ronda Ronda is and the the type of power she's able to carry uh, with her technique. It's it's incredible, man. Judo. Uh, if you really study martial arts, man, judo's oldest form. I mean, that's that's the most ancient form of combat. And uh, I've heard a lot of people, not just pro fighters, uh, in in Muay Thai, K, you know, K1, uh, obviously professional boxing, and even pro, pro MMA fighters from back in the day, man, they all used to say, uh, I know a few of them that that said, if you can master judo, you'd be unstoppable. You know, and, uh, and that's how she was for a while. You know, like mm-hmm. that was her, that was her forte. I mean, it was even to the point where it, it carried her striking uh, forward. You know what I mean? She was able to actually knock some some uh, opponents out. You know, when, during her reign, uh, or take them down with with her striking, which is crazy. But then you really saw saw the difference make when you went against more complete MMA fighters. You know, obviously Holly Holm being one of them. Holly Holly Holm just a world class striker in general. So I mean, it was, it was just you know, inevitable that Ronda was gonna hit a roadblock like that, and, you know, ultimately get defeated. But uh, I wasn't expecting her to get pummeled the way she was by uh, by Nunez. But you know, like I said, I think that was more of a casual fan moment, you know, wanting to get behind Rousey uh, for her return. You feel me? Yep, definitely. But they have the same coach too, so I feel like he wants a little redemption. As oh well. yeah. he wants another USC champion for sure, dude. Oh yeah, and why not in the middleweight division? That'd be incredible. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, so that he's the main event. Um, you said yeah. there was a couple of uh, uh, decent names uh, on the cards, or, or not too many. Uh, it's not big names, but they're not big names. So you okay. got uh, Joanne Collarwood. She's the number one contender for the flyweight title. She's supposed to fight. Uh, Valentina Shevchenko, but she's out, so she's going to fight this chick, Jennifer Maya. Nice. Not this chick, but Jennifer Maya is actually a decent fucking fighter. She's 17 and 6. Yeah, that's impressive. That's a nice record right there. Yeah. Uh, she has worked out very uh, twice, and she lost to Caitlin Chukagan, Liz Carmouche she's lost to, so I think. Joanne Calderwood, she trains over here at a fucking... Syndicate with uh, the oh, nice. fucking Jerry and Shane Shapiro, so nice. I'm rooting for nice. her to win. There you go. So whoa, she looks whoa. good. <laughs> there you go. That's she looks oh, good man. to win, bro. Her jujitsu's fire. Her fucking yeah. striking is phenomenal. She should be able to pull out that win. The champion at flyweight, isn't it the the uh, the Chinese uh, champion or no? She's in the next weight class above. The one that uh, beat uh, Joanna. That's a uh, fucking. I think that's below. That's below. Oh shit. Yeah, that's straw weight. That's at straw weight. Okay. I didn't realize Joanna was was uh, at straw weight. I thought she was uh, either at was it fly weight or uh, feather weight. No, the the other or chick, Joanna. Side. Joanna is up, but the other chick's down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Just just to clarify that. Still learning the... Uh, uh, yeah, the Zhang Wei Li is the strawweight champion. I believe. Oh, shit. Rose Nam is going to fight her. Okay, so this... I, could pretend, I mean, but then again, when you're in those weight classes, man, it's so easy to meet up when you're at those really, really low weight classes uh, below below Bantam weight. So, I mean, you're, you'll see a lot of... I'm sure there'll, there'll be uh, some two-weight division champions uh, for the women. Have, have there been any uh, two-weight uh, world champions in... Uh, in the female uh, side of the UFC? Just Amanda Nunez. She has nice. the Bantam and Featherweight, I believe. Nice. Nice. Okay. So she's obviously, Dana White considers her top, was it top four, top five uh, pound for pound in the UFC? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or greatest of all time, I uh, think. Most definitely. Yeah, it was definitely the greatest, the greatest, of, greatest all of all time. She definitely yeah, yeah. That. For sure, yeah. Pound per pound, she is... Let me pull up the app real quick.
John Williams. So she's probably number two in the world. Nice. Right behind John Jones. She's got to nice. be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and she's still active, obviously. So that's that's the crazy mm-hmm. part. But uh, aside from, from uh, that, I saw that uh, Darren – so I – was it a couple days ago? I saw him post up a photo uh, saying, like, fuck, fuck you, Robert Whitaker. And it was like him in the back seat of some car, and he had the he had the whole knee brace on, um, and uh, and then it came out from the day, a day after that uh, he uh, and then you sent me something uh, that he was it was like an MCL or ACL something tore, uh, and then he finally came out with it. He said uh, I think he got a knee stomp. He said, and as soon as he felt that pop, it was just like him trying to pretty much coast from from then on. Uh, did you notice when that happened? Yeah, it was a, the knee stomp in the second round, and that's pretty much when he the fight was over. He lost yeah, all no mobility. Legs. Yeah. Exactly. And so he was still able to use his elbows, but no, it wasn't no, the same Darren Till, bro. Exactly. So that definitely yeah. hindered him for sure. Man. But yeah, this is MCL, and uh, Robert Whitaker fucked his fucking knee up for sure. <laughs> man, see, that's, that's the thing about MMA, man. Like, I would bet more on MMA. Um, I mean, I, I'd rather bet on boxing, and that's mostly what I bet on. But MMA, man, shit like that can happen so fucking easily, dude. I mean, we all thought that, you know, you and I both felt that uh, Whitaker wasn't going to be able to hang with him, uh, you know, on the stand-up, and, and that was ultimately how uh, Till was going to win. But something like that, where you just, you don't even, you don't even expect a move like that to, to come. You know what I mean? And it, it, it changes the whole scenario of the fight, ultimately, uh, you know, giving Robert the legit victory. But uh, that's why, man, MMA is such a hard, hard fucking thing to fucking bet on. Period. Period, dude. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and, in the sec- and when he was in the corner in the second round, I heard him say something. I, I didn't know if he was talking about his knee or if he was talking about something yeah. else, but... I could kind of tell the knee stomp kind of fucked him up, but he did oh, the exact same thing to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson when he when Darren Till fought him. So he kind of gets to feel the other side of it now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, karma, man, that's what fighting is. You know. Yeah, it's a bitch, bro. It's a bitch, yeah, man. I sometimes I think I'm like, I'm like when I spar, uh, I make sure that I try and go in there with guys that I know are going to be tough, like legitimate. You know, there's guys that give you work. And so the work aspect, that term is in the middle. Guys that give you work. And there are guys that will just fucking make you look good. So that's on right. the bottom of that spectrum. And then there are guys that you know are going to fucking, you know, you're going to come out with a black guy or two, um, maybe. Or you're going to come out there, you know, a little rattled up. But And then you got, obviously, uh, you don't ever want to spar beyond that point because then you know, you're going to be in danger. But. I always try to make sure that I get in there with guys that give me more than just work because uh, for some reason I got some mental thing where it's like you uh, you earn your stripes and you you, uh, you lick your wounds at the end of the day and that's the only way you get better because a lot of these young guys right now, they get in there with uh, guys that they can just absolutely pummel, like especially in boxing, obviously. That's where we see a lot of sparring tapes. Uh, I don't see too many like MMA sparring tapes floating around because in MMA, you there's different sparring scenarios. You know, you do shooto box. You know, you can do uh, different formats. You know, you can wear your MMA, uh, your what is it, your four ounces with uh, you know, some some shin pads and, and whatnot, and, and go for for you know, light striking with with hard takedowns and, and ground and pound uh, transitions. So I mean, it, you don't really see too many tapes like that. But when you see t- tapes of, of boxers, young boxers, you know, young guys undefeated. You know, you always see them in there with easy motherfuckers, man. You see them with, you know, uh, a lot of the times it's just a facade, man. They, you see this guy fucking putting a 10-piece combo on somebody, but uh, they're from two different op- opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to talent skill level. Um, so, like, I believe you get in there with guys that are harder, that'll give you work, you know, that every punch you land in that sparring session, uh, because it's not a competition, remember, it's sparring, so it's fucking... It's practice, but, you know, you're still hurting somebody at the end of the day. Um, that's still karma at the end of the day, man. Fucking, uh, you go in there and you, you, you're given too many, man, you're not going to have any left over when you got to go, when it's fight time, you feel me? That's that's I'm my concept, you. putting it in a nutshell. 
So for a lot, a lot of these young fighters out there, man, stop getting in there with fucking easy motherfuckers that you you can dance around and, and look pretty with because that ain't that's not gonna do shit for you. Because because when totally when fight time comes and you go against a fucking dog and you're in there in a pressured situation where you've never been before, then that's when you're gonna fucking feel helpless. Trust and believe. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. That's my take on it. Yeah. I feel you on that, dude. But uh, hey, I'm looking at this card still, and uh, fucking Bobby Green and Lando Venata are supposed to have their rematch because they the last fight was a draw. So Bobby Green's looking for the fucking finish on that. You remember him? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yes, I what remember. Card was, uh, that up last time, I think you brought this this uh, fight up. I think you just mentioned it, but yeah, I didn't know it was a rematch. That's crazy. Hmm. I didn't know it was a rematch either until I looked into it. It is crazy. So that, that'll be a good one to watch, uh, or keep an eye on, at least. And what yep, weight class like, is this? That's going to be 155, so that's lightweight. Yes. Mr. Khabib. Yes, yes, or yes. Two more so fights, at least. Yes, yeah, speaking of Khabib, man, so I, I've been seeing a lot of that shit floating around, man. Uh, what do you say, um, uh, Geishi is September, right? Or is that October? It's October. It's October. And then uh, he said GSP... What was it December? <laughs> yeah, he wants him in April, apparently. Or April. Wow. But I don't know if GSP is going to come back for that one, dude. I think he's going to end up staying retired. Yeah, no, no. He, no, man. GSP, he's too smart for that. He's way too smart for that. And I know people uh, might have their fucking, you know, arguments about that. But there's no way in hell. I, I know GSP put out, put out a tweet uh, saying that he was going to, um, he's anxious for this one now, like for Khabib's match, and like trying to trying to hint like, oh, if you know he wins, you know, then it's gonna get me all fucking you know hyped up for training. But uh, I don't. Okay, listen, I I would think just because of GSP's sheer talent and dedication and, and um, you know his experience level, uh, I would say like if you put a prime GSP against Khabib, I, I don't think Khabib would have a chance. I think he would beat Khabib if it was a prime GSP. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, no doubt. GSP, I agree with that. GSP in his prime is better than Khabib now, for sure. Yeah, GSP back back in the day with the fucking uh, the knee pads, the uh, the old school tight shorts, and looking like a straight fucking video game character. Yeah, there's no way anyone's touching touching him. You know what I mean? In his that, karate gear? <laughs> For real. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Dude. <laughs> Bro, GSP looked like looked like he was a fucking an NFL wide receiver uh, in ultimate fighting uh, fucking format. Like when he used to step in there with his with his uh, tight shorts with the with the fucking knee pads that would match. Um, I mean, you just knew that that man was ready to fucking kill shit and his wrestling, dude. See, this is the thing, man. You would argue to be, you know, with his with his ground game and, and the way he's able to, to you know, camouflage his, his wrestling with his striking and, you know, mix it up and, and ultimately get his guy down where he wants and, and smash him or smash him. Uh, but GSP, Mitch. dude. <laughs> yeah, GSP never let, let that happen. And GSP went against the best wrestlers, the best fucking wrestlers. I mean, collegiate level superstars, man. And and was killing them in their own fucking arena. He was wrestling with them. He like took yeah, the bro. fight he to their Dan fucking Henderson, arena. fucking Michael Bisbing, Matt Hughes, fucking all these crazy ass yeah. wrestlers, bro. Re- well, crazy Bisbing's wrestler. probably not a wrestler, but no, no, not Bisbing, but like Josh Koscheck, John Fitch. You know, um, I mean, fuck. Uh, He's not a wrestler, but one of the best jiu-jitsu fighters in the world. Fucking BJ Penn, man. I mean, he was taking BJ down. I mean, dude, it just the level of, of who he fought uh, coming up. I mean, you can't compare his resume with anyone else. I, that's why he's still considered the GOAT uh, even till this day. I mean, still, in my opinion, still behind Jones. But he's always in the talks for, you know, top, top two uh, oh, yeah. But the fact is, is his resume is is unrivaled. As, as I mean, come on, dude. If if you put Khabib or even any other seventy pounder actively right now, 
and compare not only their resumes, but you put that aside. And if you put those same fighters, the, the recent ones now, and put them against the t competition that GSP faced, um, I don't think they would do as well as he did. No, I, mean, I don't feel like they would either. Yeah, and he's faced everyone in their prime, you know what I mean? Like GSP, when he was in his prime, every all the new superstars, all the all the ones who really were, were elite fighters uh, in MMA, uh, they were all in their prime too. So that's the thing, man. I, I, I don't think, you know, unless GSP is... You know, because his performance against Bisbing, he was still he was more susceptible uh, than he was in the past, right? That's true. Yeah, I would say I mean, so. And the fact, I mean, you can take other you know aspects into that uh, statement where like, okay, well, GSP has never fought someone as big as Bisbing, right? I mean, that that's always a difference maker. We saw that with Conor McGregor, where when he fought uh, Nate, you know, Nate being a naturally bigger guy, I mean, it was he was able to take more and put the pressure on, on Connor. So, I mean, you know, it could have been that, um, you know, the age, but then again, I mean, GSP showed, um, that complete fighter ability where he was able to scramble and, and get fucking biz being, uh, into a, a troubled situation after GSP got in trouble himself. You know, he almost got fucking knocked out, man. I mean, he was, he was definitely out on his feet. You feel me? So, Oh yeah. Yeah, so it just depends. I mean, you know, the, the exciting part is the fact that, okay, well, GSP is naturally bigger than Khabib. So it's like, how's that going to go, even though GSP is old? You know what I mean? I feel you, dude. Yeah, even though he's out of his prime now, I still feel like he's better than the people that are in there now. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, he yeah. Was, the, the active guys. Yeah, absolutely. He's still got, he's still got more... Um, athleticism and more talent uh, and of course we know he's he lives in the gym I mean he still trains you know, I know he still goes goes to TriStar I know he still goes to uh, uh, everywhere he travels to he knows all all the fucking teachers and coaches every place he goes but um, man if that fight really did happen uh, and it, can you imagine if GSP beats him <laughs> he walks away that's the only reason they won't let him do it well, now that Khabib is also going to walk away, it probably doesn't matter. But that's the only reason they wouldn't let it happen in the past. Cause, yeah, because they saw what he did with <laughs> with that middleweight title, man. <laughs> oh, man. But then again, dude, do they realize how much money... Does the UFC realize how much money they would make off of that one pay-per-view? It'd be absolutely... They would. They'd make a shit ton of money, but is it really worth having to vacate another title and go through... Just to pay more fighters to fight for the same belt. That's true, but that's true. But the UFC, like like we said before, man, they have they have two guys to replace every one that leaves. Every single one fighter that leaves, they have two to replace. It's like a it's like the Hydra effect. Chop one head off and two two uh, take its place. <laughs> you feel me? Um, yeah, I feel you. But, but if they're I gonna you, fight, why not just vacate the belt and yeah, then just have them do a super fight? Yeah, that, that is a good point, because if, let's say, George St. Pierre beats him, gets the, the lightweight title, the undisputed lightweight title, um, and then GSP vacates it, then it's like, the, what's the point? Because then it's like, is he really the true champion? I get it, like, from a standpoint of, of who is the true champion. Of course, they're going to use that. Any belt in any equations can always be used as the uh, uh, the anchor behind, behind it all. Right. You know? That's that's just how it is going to be in the UFC. Uh, but I promise you this: it'd be the most the highest grossing fight UFC will have to date. <laughs> yeah. You think it would be better than Conor and Khabib, or you yeah. think it's someone? You know what? Yeah. Actually, I probably jump the gun on that one quick because Conor's fan base is uh, a Conor rematch. See that that that's when it can be uh, a taboo uh, situation because. There's going to be a lot of fans of his. They're going to be like, well, fuck. I mean, I don't, I don't want to see this over again. You know what I mean? Then there's going to be the the real, you know, hardcore MMA fan base where they're going to be like, all right, well, this this is definitely going to be a, a one that was in the works for a while. But like you said in the beginning of the show, man, he, I mean, fucking Connor got obliterated within, you know, within that two-round mark, right? I mean, it's... I believe so. 
Yeah, it's it's not it was two rounds. I don't yeah, think it went past rounds. that. Um, so it's like, is it really? I mean, it's more of this faith of oh, okay, Connor's in better shape than he was before. That's all you know. People are gonna ride on. So I'd rather see GSP. I mean, because I'm such a big GSP fan, but at the same time, uh, that would be a true uh, goat scenario for Khabib because Khabib's trying to achieve goat status. Finding it that very yeah. you know, mark, something that no one's ever done before, um, and retire is is not only the best lightweight of all time, but the best UFC fighter of all time. But you know what? We'll just have to see because um, when it comes in regards to who's who carries the most weight in their name and who carries the most uh, what's that called clout when it comes to who they've beaten and and what their reputation brings to someone that might be able to beat them. It's always going to be GSP. GSP is going to carry that, um, carry that torch in, in, in that aspect aside from Connor. But I mean, I'm biased, man. I'm fucking biased. I love Connor McGregor, man. I'm, I'm a big Connor fan, but um, I can name you every fight GSP had in, in the UFC that, you know, cause I've watched every fucking GSP fight. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really um, follow Con- Connor's career that heavily until, you know, he was, I think it was, uh, uh, which fight was it? Ch- the Chad Mendez fight, man. That's when I really mm-hmm. noticed him, and and uh, obviously after the the Aldo fight, that was super starting to the max. So, but yeah, yeah. that's that's my that take. That was a shit. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know. I, we can talk about that one for hours, but I'm sure people will fucking want to listen to that because that's. That shit's old. We can always talk about that in the future. Fucking, um, but yeah, man. I, 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 as an as a fucking casual fan for MMA, I would still like to uh, to see that could be could be GSP fight in the works. Now the question is, how do you think he's gonna dominate Gaethje? I mean, I don't know. Gaethje can wrestle, bro, but he uses it defensively. Mm, so he, Tony point. Ferguson tried to take him down, and he was able to stay up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I mean, Khabib's a way better wrestler than Tony Ferguson, so that's kind of yeah. a shitty example. But you get who's a better point. striker in your opinion between Gaethje and uh, Khabib? Oh, Gaethje for sure, bro. Yeah, Gaethje. Yeah, I think so. Khabib's yeah. more the ground game guy. I, I don't feel yeah. like his stand up is is all. I mean, it's he's got a good great, right hand. He's but, got a great right hand. That, that so he's fucking, got a puncher's chance, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. He does. But uh, I don't know, man. I mean, Ga- Gaethje's riding a good, strong wave right now. He's very confident. You can hear him in every every interview that he, he's doing, and he's carrying a, a good amount of momentum. So uh, we'll just have to see. But if, if that happens... And he's he, training with Kamaru, bro. That's the best yeah. resemblance of Khabib that you're ever going to get from anyone. And he's a big boy. He's, he's much bigger. Mm-hmm. Bigger and stronger, for sure. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's that's we're just gonna have to wait and then training up there in fucking Colorado, man. You'll be ready for anything. That, oh, yeah. that, that fucking shit is uh like I said changes. So yeah, well, I'm excited for that one. And what's that? Is that October? When in October is that? The twenty third, I believe. Oh, okay. Twenty third, nice. Woo, so I like Halloween, two months bro. away. Three months away. Yeah. I'm yeah. psyched for October. I'm one of those fucking pumpkin spice motherfuckers, you feel me? I feel you, dude. I just like it because it's when it cools off out here, man. Yeah, Vegas is nice in the fall, man. I like Vegas in the fall. Best time of the year out there, in my opinion. Truthfully, that's the best time to come out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, because springtime in Vegas gets ridiculously windy. For my, you know, obviously for my, my best memory, but fall is when it's real chill. Fucking, you got that vibe out there, you feel me? Especially out there in Summerlin. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Fucking summer is shitty because it's either raining or it's fucking 120 degrees. I just, fuck. I saw the Vegas forecast, man. It's like all in the one, one tens and up. Mm-hmm. Crazy. You guys are roasting. Get heat stroke out here. For real, bro. How, how's uh, how's all the weed up out there, man? The, the fucking dispensary games are uh, they're getting better, man. I see better quality tree. Uh, that you've been sending me, man. They got some good stuff now. Yeah, the quality is getting better, but the heat's drying it out still, bro. So I don't really yeah. fucking know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 
that's true. <laughs> what you smoking on today, man? You there? Sorry, I think it uh phone phone. Yeah. All right, can you see me now? I'm good. Too far away from the mic. Yeah, I was just too far away from the mic. We're good. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I got some. What the fuck is this shit? Oh, Jenny Kush. It's a uh, Amnesia Haze and Rare Darkness Number Two crossbreeded. So nice. I haven't even cracked that shit open yet. Oh, I'm saving. Nice. Shave, I'm saving that shit for last. But I did get some fucking. Chunkberry from Bohemian Brothers. That's at twenty one percent. Yes, so that's yeah, that, nice. That one's a crossbreed with the, the Gooberry, right? Yeah, uh, Hell's OG Gooberry and Recon OGBX one. Ooh, these crossbreeds, man! I fucking love them. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and that's some fire weed. I've been smoking on it all day. Nice. Nice, and that that one's uh that one's I think was it the twenty two percent one or twenty three percent? I think you sent me a picture of that one. Yeah, that was twenty two. So dude, I smoked but, smoked that uh blueberry skittles right, and uh, yeah, how was it, dude? Okay, so I stuffed a cone, just a regular size uh, raw cone, with it. First off, I mean it's probably some of the stickiest, densest uh shit that I've had. It's a pure sativa though, right? Or it's a sativa dominant. Definitely isn't too much of a of a lazy hybrid. But dude, the fucking THC on this is thirty thirty point six nine five on a sativa. Damn, dude. Dude, it's fucking good. So, oh my god. So like the, cause I use my normal delivery service out here, and she was saying like, yeah, I kept one jar of this. You want to try it out? I was like, yeah, fuck it. I I haven't been on my sativas in a while, man. Just so people. People know the differences, man. Sati- if, if you get a pure fucking strong sativa, that shit can fuck with you. And, and I trust and believe, I know you uh, feel the same way. That's why you've been smoking, you know, more indicas and, and the heavier shit. Uh, because last night when I smoked this cone, um, first off, it had me in my mind so fucking heavily uh, that I was, it's a good productive weed, trust and believe, like. My girl smoked a little bit of it, and uh, she was on her. She was working on her business on her computer for probably like four or five hours straight. I mean, it was solid, but it, it's not the type of weed that you want to be social with because uh, if someone's trying to talk to you and you're in your mind like that, oh, dude, like it throws you off. But it kept it kept me up until fucking like two, three a.m. in the morning, bro. Like, it was crazy, and I'm like, okay, that's definitely weed that you want to smoke. Like, if you're going to wake and bake, that's the yep. one. That's not the one you smoke at, like, 4 or 5 in the air. Like, on 420, you're definitely not smoking that, because good luck trying to fucking calm down. I've never no, had a 420 either. is the indica switch, bro. Yes. Or at least the, the indica. switch over to the head. Shit. Yeah, a 50-50 or, like, a, a 60-40 indica, yes, definitely. A good hybrid at 420 is, is where it's at, but... Uh, man, I haven't had a sativa that fucking strong. So it's from fucking uh, uh, Maven Genetics, dude. And uh, yeah, it, the total the, the total cannabinoid percentage is 35.674. So I mean, this was some heavy fucking heavy flower, man. And uh, I like yeah. smoking, you know, the low 20, mid 20s uh, to just vibe to. But that's definitely the weed where you're like, you're going to be up, up inside the crib or in the office fucking working for hours that's the one that's the or or you even get no fucking workout in that's definitely the one hell yeah i'm gonna have to try that shit out bro it sounds fire listen man, hey just a couple more fights i want to fucking yeah yeah pop out at the Go end ahead. no i'll Go pop ahead. them out at the end my bad what were you gonna say oh man i was about to say fucking you come up here man you're gonna try some crazy ass shit i know you've been smoking uh some of that Pacific Northwest stuff. I mean that that stuff you have is all Pacific Northwest uh, uh, strains, dude. That gooberry and all that. That's all Pacific yeah. Northwest. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Nothing special. Not to carry on that. Yeah, it's that making topic. its way down, dude. Finally. But yes, it is. And about I'm fucking in. time. I'm happy. Fuck yeah, man. Vegas needs it for sure. Oh yeah, dude. It'll be nice when you make it out of here. But hey, on the way out, bro, just a couple more fights to pay attention to yeah, tomorrow on the it. fucking uh, UFC Vegas Five card. Yep. Uh, we got a light heavyweight bout against Gerald Marshart and Ed Herman. 
That should right. be a really good one. Gerald Marshard is who I'm rooting for on that one. Right. And then we have another one at middleweight, uh, Kevin Holland. I don't know if you remember him. He's a very interesting character. His fighting style is one of a kind. He's very oh. entertaining to watch. I so I'll be rooting for him. Uh, and yeah. he's going to be fighting Trevin Giles. Okay. And is this uh, either of them ranked yet uh, in this division or no? Ooh, I don't believe No, most of these guys are unranked still. So, okay. so they're up and coming. Contenders for sure, yeah. Guys, guys that are trying to get their uh, that top twenty ranking or that top fifteen. I mean, uh, yes, sir. Okay, cool. That's what's up, and that that is on ESPN uh, Plus, right? Or ESPN uh, simulcast, so it'll be on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Nice, nice. Okay, great. And uh, uh, before we go, just just so people uh, uh, know a little bit about the boxing fights coming up, so uh, lightweight division. We talked about Ryan Garcia getting his fight uh, with Luke Campbell, so that's one to watch for. I believe that's September. Another uh, fight uh, that's notable uh, that got sealed is uh, Gervonta Tank Davis at 130 against Leo Santa Cruz. So that's another supposed 135er to keep an eye out. Another potential uh, fight for Ryan Garcia. So that's that's another one that got sealed up and uh, premier boxing championships is coming back heavily so if people want to tune into that go uh, go to their website see their uh, or go to their instagram and see the fucking lineup that they have because uh, it's going to be an exciting fucking fall of fights boxing and mma period hell yeah that sounds fucking lit bro yeah I can't wait oh, yeah. for these fucking matchups yes man. Oh, yeah. No, it's, the year's going to end properly with fights, at least. I don't, I don't know about the other sports. I don't know what's going to be the situation with, with uh, you know, how other sports are going to pan out. But I promise you this, by the end of the year, uh, this year, we're going to have uh, a full fucking schedule of fights and people are going to be entertained, period. So if we continue to stay on lockdown, people, fuck it. At least we got fighting. Straight up, bro. And on that note. If y'all made it to the end, like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, download our yes. podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Google. With yes. that said, we're out. We're out of here. Till next time.